On this episode of China Uncensored, when Chinese state media brags about deeper ties between China and Bolivia, you know Bolivia is in deep trouble. Hi, welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. I want to share with you an exciting story of resistance against an oppressive regime. I'm not talking about China. And no, I'm not talking about The Last Jedi either. There are some controversies I just will not touch. I'm talking about the resistance in Bolivia against President for Life Evo Morales. Bolivia is one of the poorest countries in South America. So what is propping Morales up? Well, like many countries, Bolivia is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. And that could be bad news for a lot of ordinary citizens in Bolivia. I sat down with Bolivian activist, member of the resistance, and possible Jedi, Janice Vacadasa, on the sidelines of the Oslo Freedom Forum in New York. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, for people who don't really know much about uh, the situation in Bolivia, what's, uh, what's going on there right now? Okay, so Bolivia is in the middle of South America, mm -hmm. and we are a country that is currently going through a democratic crisis that has been seen previously in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. Venezuela, Ecuador. We're just not at the tipping point quite yet. Mm -hmm. But you have a president, so it's a democracy, right? It, it's a competitive authoritarianism, so it's, it's a weird hybrid between democracy and dictatorship. Mm -hmm. We do have political awesome. opposition parties, it's so great, mm -hmm. but it, everything is controlled by the state at the end of the day. And um, there is a big resistance movement, a citizen movement, mm -hmm. because the president asked the country in a referendum if we wanted to have a change to the constitution to make it legal for the president to be reelected indefinitely. We said no, mm -hmm. we won with a high percentage of the vote. But then he turned to the constitutional court and had them make it legal to be reelected indefinitely. Okay. So our elections are next year, people are protesting, we want mm -hmm. him to obey the results of the referendum, but we're not quite sure where it's gonna go yet. Well, why wouldn't you want a president for life? Why I mean, would they have that we? in China, it's great. It worked so well, right? Well, and I does. think it's worked very well for other countries too, but mm. um, the funny part, the irony out of all of this is that our president is an indigenous president, mm -hmm. which has worked very well in his favor. Our country was the first one to have um, the rights of the environment as Mother Earth recognized as part of the constitution. Mm. But then again, um, there are several human rights violations to indigenous people in Bolivia. They are being displaced of their national and natural parks right now. Even under the current... Under the current president. And president Morales. Purposefully. Right? He um, applied this de Supreme Decree, 1366, mm -hmm. on May this year, which says that our natural parks and indigenous areas can be open for hydrocarbon exploration. And guess which companies are doing such explorations right now? <sighs> Nicaragua. Definitely. No. <laughs> China. Oh, I, that was my second guess. Yep. So China has taken an interest in Bolivia. A high, 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 high interest. Mm -hmm. China is actually on a bilateral level. Mm -hmm. China owns 80% of our external debt. 80%. 80%. Yes, we used to receive a lot of funds from mm -hmm. Venezuela because our economy is very much... <laughs> they don't have much to give for funding. But anymore, then things changed for those guys mm -hmm. and we were like, where should we go? And it's funny, they were also getting a lot of investment from China. Weren't they? I'm sure it'll work out for Bolivia though. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There's a pattern that's been repeated Let's and th that's why we need to raise um, awareness about this because we already have a huge crisis in Venezuela. We have mm -hmm. a very violent crisis in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. You don't want Bolivia to go there, especially because Bolivia is in the middle of South America. We're mm -hmm. very well connected to the countries around us. And then at the same time, there's a high level of narcotraffic and coca production in Bolivia because it's actually legal to grow coca in my country. It's legal. It's legal, yeah. Are there non-cocaine reasons you can have coca? Most definitely. There are a lot of typical um, ways to use coca for tea, for medicine, mm -hmm. but this current government, again, president, indigenous, and also leader of the coca growers unions, that's where mm -hmm. he came from, um, he's taking the permits to grow coca and giving it only to the areas that take it to narcotraffic. There's a UN study that oh. says that those areas, 97% of the production goes towards narcotraffic and the areas where they actually use it for the typical legal um, ways to produce coca are not getting the permits anymore. So they've been protesting and we've had several coca growers protests under this government, mm. which was unthinkable when he rose to power. Wow. So 
President Morales is sort of using like his image as an indigenous person mm -hmm. representing the coca growers to basically it's basically using that as a propaganda method. yes hmm. most definitely and um, both inside and outside of the country outside of the country he's really appreciated by the international community because of the respect for indigenous rights and mm -hmm. mother earth while again inside the country we've seen terrible terrible um, damage to our natural areas and to take it to more specific examples mm -hmm. we found in um, Chinese citizens and companies that are illegally trading our Jaguars teeth mm -hmm. and skin mm -hmm. and every time we've tried to take this to trial because it's illegal and Jaguars are endangered in my mm -hmm. country we haven't been able to have them process and there's just there's no rule of law in the country at the moment everything is co-opted by the executive branch mm -hmm. but it's affecting even more because most of our natural resources are being taken by Chinese companies. Can we just, just go back for a moment? What, what Jaguar teeth and skin, mm -hmm. what, uh, what is that used for? Uh, it has a high value for, for collectors, I guess. Huh. I know that for what the statements that uh, were given to the press, people, um, farmers, are mm -hmm. getting paid $100 per Jaguar. And then this skin is being taken illegally to China mm -hmm. and Europe and other markets, and it's being sold by 10 times the price. So China is taking a real interest in Bolivia. Um, besides um, the poaching that's happening, mm -hmm. uh, how else is China? Uh, like, what are, what are they investing in? Well, see, from 2013 until right now, Mm -hmm. $609 million have been invested by the Chinese government in Bolivia. And by 2025, it will be over a billion dollars that are invested. But uh -huh. here's the catch. We invest in projects to create infrastructure, but we select, China says, mm -hmm. who's going to be the company that carries and executes these projects. Mm -hmm. And it's normally always Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. So Bolivian companies, um, business people, and just Bolivian workers have absolutely no access to these projects. We're losing jobs, if you want to mm. see it that way. We have absolutely no control. There's no way to oversee these um, contracts. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot and a lot of money that's being used. And at the same time, most of these projects either haven't been carried to the end, so there are a lot of mm. unfinished projects, or they have been executed poorly, and then you have bridges that just fall within the month uh -huh. and things like that. And one of the biggest issues with this is that given that the Morales government has successfully eroded the independence of the different branches of government, you can't hold them accountable. There's no way to mm. take this to trial because, again, the trial is just not going to work. And if you make too much noise around it, like some of our um, environmental activists have done, they get sued and persecuted uh, judicially and they're not able to continue doing their activism. So you're mm -hmm. in a crossroads that's really affecting our environment mainly, mm -hmm. but also it's, it's, it's part of a machinery that is, su that is supporting my government's erosion of democracy, which is gonna have mm -hmm. its tipping point in the elections next year. Mm -hmm. So Chinese investment, it's, it's not helping the local economy, it's helping prop up what is essentially a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. and. Bolivia is one of the poorest countries in South America, so h how are you going to be able to pay back this debt? That is the main question that everyone has right now. Mm -hmm. um, the current government rose to power with a speech, and a rightful speech in a way, mm -hmm. that we had been often selling our natural resources to big uh, external forces such as the empire, which is what they call the U.S. and right-wing governments uh -huh. all the time. But it's like we just switch empires from one to the other. China is owning most of what we do. It's the money that we're getting from China is also going to really unnecessary stuff. Like we've spent over $40 million buying two MA-60 military airplanes, which we absolutely don't need. We're not oh, at war no, right now. Those are pretty cool. They are cool. And then there's over like $150 million that have been spent on buying six helicopters mm -hmm. for the president. And then one thing else I wanted to mention mm -hmm. is that um, we've spent over $250 million buying a satellite from China. Mm -hmm. And this happened recently after the government nationalized the biggest telephone company in Bolivia which they mm -hmm. are using through this satellite. And at the same time, the satellite is allowing the national TV station to be able to reach even more rural areas than we could before. 
may I add, this national TV station, State TV, is giving nothing but propaganda about the government and it never reports on stuff like the crisis in Venezuela or Nicaragua. You don't hear about that I'm in this shocked. news. Can you believe, do you see any similarities with any other government we may have been talking about? <laughs> Interesting. So, so really in Bolivia you're seeing the same thing uh, that you're seeing in countries around the world, particularly in Africa, but also in other places in South America and Central America, where China is basically acting as sort of a modern day colonial power. Exactly. Um, so China is extracting resources as well, like what, what do they want from Bolivia? From, well, our natural resources for mm -hmm. sure, and then you also have to keep in mind Bolivia has the highest lithium reserves in the world, around 70% yes, is estimated to be mm -hmm. there. So you want to be in good relations with us in a way. And at the same time, it's just a very great way for China to expand its geopolitical power in mm -hmm. South America. Again, mm -hmm. we're in the middle of everything. There's a reason that Che Guevara wanted to start his revolution in Bolivia mm -hmm. specifically. It's very strategically located. It is very strategically located. And then you also have a country that has no rule of law, so you can get away with um, not paying your workers properly, not finishing mm -hmm. uh, the projects that you're working on. And also I should add, and this is very important, um, there have been not just Bolivians denouncing this, but we also know that the Chancellor of Bolivia spoke about this with the Chancellor of China. There are Chinese convicts that are taken to Bolivia to finish their term in my country while mm. working on infrastructure projects or mining projects under basically slavery conditions. Wow, they really are doubling down on the colonialism. They right? really are going back to it. Like, it's it's really bad. And mm -hmm. at the same time, like I said, there's no way to have a check and balance to, to oversee mm -hmm. all of this. Is China playing a direct role in the drug trade? Um, I wouldn't dare to say directly. Okay. But, for example, there's this one case that was really big for my country. Mm -hmm. it, it's about the Tibnis. Tibnis is the name mm -hmm. of this natural national park that was also an indigenous territory that's incredibly important for the ecosystem of the entire country. Mm -hmm. So it's very protected by law for years already. And then the Tibnis, sadly, is really close to the places where you grow coca. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the government came up with this plan that they were going to build a road executed by Chinese companies through the middle of the Tibnis, which was not only unnecessary, but suspicious since it would make transporting coca a lot easier for them. Mm -hmm. So indigenous groups that lived there, they had this big march towards La Paz, um, the city capital, mm -hmm. and there was heavy, heavy violent repression against indigenous groups, including children and the er elderly. It became a big problem and the government tried to shut it down and after that they started persecuting the activists and indigenous mm -hmm. people that were talking about this. So. China is not necessarily clamping down on our indigenous people, but they are being the economic um, provider for all of these actions to happen because otherwise you wouldn't have these companies going in. And again, um, while I wouldn't dare to say that China is the one strategic behind my government because mm -hmm. we know that it is Venezuela and Cuba that are sticking their nose inside my country, we do know that it is Chinese money, again, 80% of our external debt is to China only. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are sustaining the system, the authoritarian system that we have in Bolivia right now. And what's even worse, no one is paying any attention. Well, the audience of China Uncensored will be paying attention Well, they now. better do. <laughs> so what's your role in all of this? Um, as one of many activists in the resistance movement to Morales' attempt to hold on to power for mm -hmm. even longer, we are trying to, one, educate the citizenship of Bolivia about what's happening, why these elections that are coming are really a very important moment for mm -hmm. our democracy, and at the same time we're doing that through nonviolence. Mm -hmm. We're really committed to nonviolent action from the citizenship. We're really committed to strategic work mm -hmm. um, and including different areas of Bolivia. If there is something that I do give to, to Morales' government is that he brought representation to many minorities that mm. were previously ignored by the system. So we want to keep this. We want to keep this inclusion, this union that we have in the country, but at the same time we want democracy. Most people from my generation have known no other president than Morales. And it's so difficult to explain both to the international community 
and sometimes the people within the country that despite being an indigenous president, you mm -hmm. have heavy violation to indigenous rights mm -hmm. and environmental rights, and you also have absolutely no rule of law. So we're trying to work with what we have. Um, the movement I'm in is called Standing Rivers, mm -hmm. Rios de Pie. And again, we're trying to translate all of this information through social media, mm -hmm. nonviolent mobilization, and education to other people. And so if somebody wanted to learn more about uh, your group or what you're doing or just the situation in Bolivia, where, where would you point them to? Uh, to our Facebook page, Rios de Pie, Standing Rivers. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want to look for me on social media or just check out, there are many activists talking about Bolivia at the moment. Okay. So it shouldn't be difficult to pin us down mm -hmm. on the internet. Well, we can definitely provide a link in the comment section yes, below. Yes, please do. And check our movement. You're going to have such good laughs. We do a lot of laughtivism. We try to use humor as a laugh way to activism. educate people. So our activities tend to be really funny mm -hmm. and strategic too. So you're a laughtivist? Um, activist if you want because okay. you, you need more than laughter. You need to mobilize people on the street. But yeah, we do that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That was very interesting. Thank you so much. It's great to be able to bring some light to this yeah, situation. Well, good luck to you. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed that interview, but there is more to know. Why don't you give us a rundown of some of the things that you talk about on the China Unscripted podcast? Yes, in this podcast we have a second Bolivian, so it's not just me. And we will be two telling Bolivians. you about, two Bolivians telling Price you about how the president is the reincarnation of indigenous gods. And also many other things, including corruption and the influence of China within our elections and how that played out for the re-election and definite of the president. So there's a lot more material to cover. Plus, the story of a loved child and miners who throw dynamite. Yes, and how we're using nonviolence to counter that. They're Effectively. not using the dynamite. No, we're not using the dynamite. Effective nonviolence, we are using them. Which is the best kind of dynamite. 